Hi guys, and welcome to Classic Rock and Country Music Facts and Trivia. Appreciate you being here. Today's video is on Hank Williams Sr. and his death on New Year's Day in 1953. Uh, kind of a behind the scenes and what exactly happened there. Take a look. Considered one of America's greatest songwriters, Hank Williams was born on September 17th, 1923 in Butler County, Alabama. In the subsequent years, uh, he released songs like I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry, Your Cheating Heart, I Saw the Light, and Hello Good Looking. As a result, he became an all-timer, but the songwriter, performer, and father passed away at a young age of 29 years old on New Year's Day of 1953 in West Virginia. During his life, he sold millions of albums uh, with a lot of number one hits. Um, here's some stuff about Hank Williams' death. With a gig set up in Charlotte and uh, Charleston, West Virginia, on New Year's Eve, 1952, Williams, who was in Montgomery, Alabama, was facing a problem. A snowstorm made it so that no one could fly, but the upcoming show was calling, and it was a big payout. So Williams hired an aptly named college student, Charles Carr, to drive him to the date. The day before the show, December 30th, the two stopped in a hotel in Birmingham before moving out the next morning. They arrived in Knoxville, finally, and got on a plane, but had to land early due to more bad weather. In Knoxville again, Williams checked into the Andrew Johnson Hotel and saw a doctor. He was fading thanks to a mixture of life of drinking hard and the drug chloral hydrate. He had been taken for chronic back pain. Some historians believe he suffered from spina bifida occulta. Uh, he did have a back surgery in his life, too. The doctor gave him an injection of B12, essentially a stimulant, and morphine. Uh, when Carr and Williams checked out of the hotel the next morning, Bell Hobbs had to carry Williams to the car. Near the end of his life, Williams suffered from the number of ailments, from chronic back issues to addiction to heart problems. Around this time, he met Toby Marshall, who said he was a doctor, but who was a known forger and convicted criminal. Some historians say Marshall bought his physician's cred credentials from a traveling salesman. As Williams was now struggling, barely alive, still with Carr, Marshall told the college student that the New, York, New Year's Eve gig was canceled, but the car was driving to Ohio for his next show on New Year's Day. An idea that, well, seems kind of crazy today. That night, the car drove some 20 hours before having to pull over at an all-night restaurant and find someone to help with the rest of the task. Don Surface, a professional taxi driver, helped out and two men with Williams in the back seat forged ahead. When Surface and Carr stopped a few hours later for gas, they looked back to Williams and realized he had been dead for so long that rigor mortis had already begun to set up in his body. The autopsy later showed that Williams had hemorrhages in his heart, his neck, and the doctor, Ivan Malinin, uh, declared the musician died of acute right uh, ventricular dilation. He also said that Williams had been severely beaten and kicked in the groin recently. Williams had been in a bar fight in Montgomery days earlier. Combination of drugs, morphine, oral hydrate, alcohol, and perhaps more eventually did him in. After Williams died, there was such a demand for his music that MGM Records had to trim its other planned releases that year in half to satisfy customers. You talk about a shame. 29 years old. Uh, and he had a lot of music in him, you know. I mean, it's... And it's how people take advantage, uh, doctors, and you know, all, friends, it's a shame, old oh, Hank, if you guys enjoyed this, please don't forget about classic TV facts and trivia, head on over there, please subscribe, uh, have a great day, God bless, I'll be praying for you.